today on Be Something Wonderful, how to ask God for what you really want. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. I've been reading the comments on the channel. I've been reading your emails, and, and really I hear a lot of comments like, Tom, I, why, why do I have to follow a script that I don't like, or that's undesired, or that's unwanted. I just don't get it. And then, and then what, why is it I can't just simply ask for what I want from God or from that higher power? And how does the law of attraction and law of assumption, how do they fit in with, with everybody is you pushed out and free will and, and this whole idea of infinite realities and the analogy of the movie so the, the movie, the film strip and picking your film role and that others are extras or, or supporting actors in your life and you're the star. How does it, it just seems to be some contradictions in there. And just, how, in other words, how do I ask God for what I really want? That's a great question. And today we're going to unpack that in more. So here's, here's how I want to start, guys. And, and, and this is going to be really big. Remember, you, God can only give you what you're giving yourself, right? God, you can only have who you're being. This is really what it gets down to. So let's, let's break this down a little bit. God always says yes to the context of your desires. In other words, who you're being, that state you're occupying, and is dispassionate with respect to the content. Right? God doesn't look at whether, whether something is good for you or bad for you. God doesn't know that. God doesn't make those judgments. You do. Right? God doesn't look at anything as big or small or right or wrong or good or bad. You only have that content with your desires. God looks at the context, whether you're being it. If you're wanting something and you're asking for something from a state of need or a state of lack, that's the context that God gives you. He gives you that context of more of us. You're just creating more wanting and more, more lack. Do you hear this? You can't, you can't get more than who you are, more what you're, more what you're conscious. You can only get what you're conscious of being. Do you hear that? So God doesn't look at, God looks at the context, not the content. Right? So if, you, if you're going, why do I always get what I don't want, is because the context is that's what, you're, that's what you're being. That's what you're creating. You're creating a state of focusing on things you don't want, even though you're asking about things you want. Do you hear this? Right? So whether it's something you want or don't want, infinity always nods its head yes. God always says yes, whether you want it or don't want it. So when you say no, why can't, I think one of you asked, why can't I just say no to the script and say I'm a creator and I, want, I, I, I get to have what I want? Be, be, and hear this, guys, because that, the, the way to say no is to say yet. Yeah, the way to say no to an unwanted reality is to say yes to your wanted reality, say to yes to what you really want, not resisting what you don't want, right? Do you, and, and, and really, there's a question. I used to teach um, English as a second language in South America. And, and the worst question a, a, a TESOL teacher or a teacher of a foreign language can ask a student is, do you understand why? Why is that such a ter terrible question for, but as, a, as a teacher of English as a second language? Because you're speaking in the language that you're trying to teach them. Just like God doesn't understand that you're, that when you're asking from need or asking from lack of what you want. You've got to speak God's language, and that comes from demonstrating it, just like a second language learner. If I ask a second language learner, do, uh, do you understand the word dance, they're going to nod their head. But am I certain that they understand it? No, they're going to nod anyway, right? Because I'm not speaking their language. How do I do it? I dance. I demonstrate. And that's how you've got to ask God, by demonstrating, by being it by occupying that reality, by identifying with it, by knowing it's already yours, by imagining the end. That's the analogy, right? You demonstrate by example. By be, because if you, it's just, whenever you're asking from lack or whenever you're resisting something you don't want, 
Like this is a script I don't want. That's like you asking, do you understand to a second language learner, right? Asking is wanting and desiring it from a state of lack or focused on what you don't want. Either you're asking for, from what you want from a state of resistance, from a state, from a state of feeling lack, or you're focused on what you don't want. You want to get rid of it. Either way, you're not getting what you want, right? You're pushing away what you want and you're attracting what you don't want. So let's use this example, this, this um, second language um, example. So imagine this is the, the questions that you would ask a second language learner. And on this side is reality creation. So here's you, you ask to the, to the student that's learning, for example, English and does not speak English as their first language. You say, do you understand? And, then, and, and you're trying to get them to understand the word dance as an example. And they just nod their head yes. Whatever you say, they'll just nod their head yes. Why? Because they don't understand you. You're not speaking the language of demonstration. That's like you saying to God, I really want and I need this. So what does God say? God nods his head and says, yes, you do. And here's more things to want. Here's more things to need. You create that state, right? And then again, you ask the second language learner, do you understand? And the second language learner says, yes, I understand, right? right? But that's like you saying, I don't want this in my life. I don't want this script. I don't want this reality. What does God say? Yes, you don't. And here's more of it. Here's more of what you don't want. Do you get the insanity here, guys? So finally, you get the idea and you ask the second language learner, demonstrate, or you, or you finally go, you finally demonstrate dance. You dance. You dance and you show the word dance. You demonstrate the word dance. And then what is the second language learner goes? Nods yes. Now you're getting there. Now you're becoming what you want. You assume that you have it in reality creation terms. Right? You're demonstrating dance, you're demonstrating it by assuming you have it, by occupying, by imagining your wish fulfilled. Right? And then what does God do? God, God or infinity or reality nods yes and you start shifting to your wanted state. Do you see this? And then you, you confirm that understanding with, with your second language learner and said, okay, show me dance. And that, that your student gets up and dances. Now you know they understand. You stopped asking the question. You started communicating with them in a language they can understand, right? That's you persisting in your wish fulfilled, feeling it real. Showing dance is dem you demonstrate your reality by persisting in the wish fulfilled. And then what happens? That, that student dances and God or your manifestations, they manifest in 3D reality. That's a powerful analogy. So let's, let's move a little further with this. So the subscriber said, if we should still follow the current script, when, when and, and, she, and she gave a bunch of uh, examples, when you're in a toxic relationship, when you're in a job that you hate, right? When you're with a, a partner that, 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 that uh, you're going to get divorced and you're in the same house and you need to separate, all of this, do we have to experience undesired circumstances? Isn't there a way, this is still the subscriber asking, isn't there a way to say, no, I am not going to experience this. I'm sorry, I'm the creator. So no, this will not be part of my experience. Yes, there is a way, but it's not that way, right? Because remember, when you say no, God nods his, his head and says, okay, right? So you're resisting it here. So how do you say no? How do you deny that script as your reality and choose a new script or a new film role? You do it by saying yes to what you do want. Yes to your desire. Moving your attention, moving your imagination, moving your state within to what you do want. That's how it's done going up and quietly changing that film role while you persist and you continue in the script. Because as you change the film role, you enter new scripts. And you change a film role and you enter a new script. You're always on a new script. It might not be perceivable or obvious yet in your 3D reality, but it's changing. Do you see this, guys? So den you deny current unwanted realities by shutting the door going within and choosing your desired reality and imagining your wish fulfilled. In other words, illuminating your future slide or your future wish. That's powerful. Let's unpack this a little bit more. 
Remember, reality doesn't move. Infinity is all there is. It doesn't go anywhere. You move. You do. You move within, with your thoughts, with your feelings, with your assumptions, with your beliefs. You are the source of the people, events, and circumstances that you're trying to control, change, and get rid of. Do you see this? So when you try to get rid of, you just keep creating that. Just like we talked about complaining. When you complain, you, compl you create the things you complain about. Well, you're creating those circumstances as you try to change them, as you try to get rid of them, as you, as you reel against them, right? Infinity is inclusive. It's not exclusive. It includes everything. It only says yes to everything as you wish, right? This means you get everything you say yes to and everything you say no to. Infinity says yes. So when you say yes to something and you do it from a state of already having it, of already being it, in other words, from demonstrating it versus communicating with God through, un through demonstration of being it, then you, you get it, you become it. But if you, ask from a, if you ask from a state of lack, from a state of absence, from a state of not seeing that you don't have it, then you attract more lack of not having it. And if you say no to a reality and you try to resist it, you want to get rid of it, you want to change it, infinity or God says, yes, here you are. It seems like you like that reality. Do you hear it? Right? You're fascinated with it. God gives that to you. So that's what we're talking about today. So let's take this a step further. All potential realities or film roles exist. All scripts are written. They are infinite in number. So when you say, should we follow the script if, you have no choice but to follow the script. You're, and here's where your choice comes in. You have the choice to either follow it consciously and being aware and, 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 or unconsciously and being led by the script. You can follow the script consciously while imagining your wish fulfilled, changing the film role, choosing your new reality, as the script, the script then begins changing according to your new reality, your, your, your inner state or your imagined end. Or you can get moved by the script unconsciously as you want to get rid of it, as you want to change it, and it pulls you into more unfavorable lifelines, more unfavorable film roles, and more unfavorable condition, people, events, and circumstances in your life. Right? You, get, you continue to shift in more of those. You see more of that. Right? You're always following the script, either consciously, awake and aware, or unconsciously, asleep. So you're always following it no matter what. The question is, if it's an undesired uh, script, if it's something that you don't want, you continue to follow it. As you light up your future, as you imagine your wish fulfilled, that script begins changing immediately. Why? Because it's all within you. Remember, 3D reality, the people, events, and circumstances that you don't like, that are undesirable, come from within you. They are you. That's what Neville means with everyone is you pushed out. We'll get to that in a second. But remember, it's not about changing, resisting, getting rid of everything, anything in your current script. Why? Because when you do, it binds you to it, right? Saying no from a state of lack, staying, saying no from a state of need, binds you to that unwanted reality. This is big, right? You're asleep in your unconscious. This moves you to even more undesirable lifelines and scripts and film roles. That's what we're talking about here. Let's, let's unpack this a little bit more. So I just want to say, that except you said, well, how, how come I have to accept an undesirable reality? Accepting doesn't mean you agree with it. Accepting's not agreeing, right? You're accepting it as one quantum possibility of an infinite number of possibilities. You accept it because it's coming from you. It, you, you created it. It doesn't mean you agree with it. You get to choose again. It's about recognizing the current reality the film role in the script as one possibility of an infinite number of quantum possibilities and affinity and choosing again a new film role and a new reality. How do you choose? By imagining your wish fulfilled, by assuming that new identity, that new version of yourself, by rolling that, that, that future slide in your head, that future frame of what you really want, by desiring without the, without the resistance, by wanting it 
with the knowing that it's yours, the conviction that, that it's going to be yours in 3D reality. That's what we're talking about here. How? By imagining and living in the desired end. You change film roles that have different scripts immediately as you consciously follow the script. You're still following the script, but the script's changing as you follow it. Hear this. Do you hear this? So when you say toxic relationship or a home life you don't like, you're changing it immediately as you get into that imagined state of your wish fulfilled, as you assume your new reality. It's subtle, it's imperceptible until it isn't. Until you go, oh man, it changed. That's what we're talking about here, right? Saying no and demanding that reality change before you do only keeps you creating unwanted realities. I really want to hit that today. So let's, uh, let's unpack this a little bit more. Saying no, asking why you have to experience undesired realities, saying this will not be part of my experience makes it a part of your experience. Do you hear this, right? So saying, no, this is not a part of my experience. Reeling against it makes it a part of your experience. Instead, recognize it, accept it. Doesn't mean you agree with it, you accept it. And then you choose again, right? When you fight and push against current past reality, remember, current reality is past. Every, look around you. Through everything you see in 3D reality is already past. You're looking at the dead past. Where is the future? In that now, eternal now moment where you're, where you're imagining your wish fulfilled. And that's not even the future. That's the present moment. Because there is no future. There is no past. It's all happening now, right? You believe in it, right? So when you push against something that, that's a current reality but it's really a past, it implies, here's what it implies, and this is big, it implies you believe in it, right? And, and, you, and it implies that you agree with it. Do you hear this? When you said, well, why do I have to accept a toxic relationship where they're, where they're mistreating me and, and all that? It doesn't, it's, when you accept, it's not the saying that you're, gonna, you're saying it's right or it's good for you. You're saying it is a current reality, but I choose again. You're not agreeing with it, but when you resist it, when you keep, putting, when you keep saying, why do I have to put up with it? You are agreeing that it's a reality that you have to tolerate. Do you hear this? And you create it in that moment, in that moment, in that moment, and it goes on and on, right? Instead, accept the quantum possibility and choose and imagine again and choose another one, right? Your free will is to choose, not change, because you can't change the script. What you can is choose a new one by choosing your film role or choosing a new alternative reality to occupy. And that comes with a brand new script that's leading you to your wish fulfilled. You get it, guys. All scripts are written. So you're trying to change something, trying to resist something that just keeps pushing you to more unfavorable scripts, more unfavorable lifelines, right? So let's uh, hit this a little bit more. So, and here's the other questions. I really want to hit this today. We're going we're gonna to get a, a deeper understanding of this, but really in a simple, clear way. What about everyone is you pushed out? What about thought transmission? What about free will? Do we have it or not? What about the law of assumption versus the law of attraction? And so one of you said, well, the law of assumption isn't about vibration and frequency. That's just the law of attraction. That's, that's, a, that's on a smaller level. So I really want to hit this, guys, that there are no contradictions. Everything fits. And I want to take this quote from Nikola Tesla. So what did Nick say? If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Wow. Think of this now. There, there is only one, there's only source energy. There's only pure positive energy of light, of love. Everything else is a manifestation of that one energy. Everything's energy. And that energy is everywhere. And included in every part of that energy is everything. It's holographic and non-local. And that energy doesn't move anywhere. It doesn't have to because it is everywhere already. But it vibrates, but it doesn't go anywhere, right? But remember, the energy behind it is just love. And the manifestation of that energy are different frequencies and different vibrations that we call universes. We call the 3D world. We call things that we see in 3D reality. All of that are manifestations of that love that one energy, that in, in, on different frequencies and different vibrations. 
Do you hear this? Let's hit this a little bit more. So of course it fits in. And, and the law of assumption is about assuming a state that has a certain frequency and vibration. That's all that means. It's not like frequency and vibration is not part of it. Of course it's part of it, right? Source energy is infinity. It's God. It's both love and law. Right? God is love, but God's also law, meaning it's that impersonal law. That, that God can only give you what you give yourself. And so if you're giving yourself things that you don't want, if you're focused on things that are unwanted, if you're, if you're needing things and wanting things from, a, from a, a state of lack, then that's what you attract. That's the law. But God still loves you beyond measure. It does, that, 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 that those come together, right? Remember, it's holographic and non-local. Every part of that energy contains the whole of infinity. And it's everywhere right now, right? You have access to the past, present, and future. When? Right now. Because there's only the present, right? So when you, when you change your assumptions, when you change your beliefs, when you think differently, when you feel differently about yourself and others, you change all time. You change the past, you change the present, and you change the future because there's only now. That's powerful, right? God, all that is, just is, period. And you have access to that is right now. It, it, God is both source of infinity and everything within infinity, right? God's source in everything. In the beginning, God. Period, right? So let's unpack this a little bit more. So infinity, source energy, doesn't go anywhere. It just is. This energy manifests into infinite number of vibrations and frequencies, and the mix is unlimited, right? And so every infinite variation is a potential universe, state, or reality. Do you hear this? So that's why when, when, when Scripture says, in my, house, in my Father's house are many mansions, those are the mansions. It's different realities, different, but different mix. It's a different mix of vibrations and frequency, a different state of being. And so how do you align? How do you correspond? How do you occupy those different states? By, by what you're thinking, feeling, believing, and being. Your vibrational mix. That's how you assume a state. Right? So when you imagine your wish fulfilled, when you imagine the end, you're occupying a state where your wish is done, where you have it. You're now occupying a certain vibrational mix of, of frequency and vibration in a, in, a, in a certain reality. That's how it fits. The law of assumption, when you assume, imagine, and occupy a state, you are corresponding, hear this, with its vibration and frequency, and you become one with that state of being and that, that reality. You identify with that state. You identify that by, by identifying with the, that concept of yourself. That concept of yourself in others is how you determine that state. Right? What, do you, what you believe about yourself creates that reality. It all comes through you. It all fits. Do you see this? Thoughts, and we'll talk about thought transmission, thoughts are manifestations of source energy. They're manifestations. They're one and the same. Thoughts are holographic. They are everywhere and they contain, every thought contains the whole of infinity. So they, it's not about transmitting thoughts. They don't go anywhere. They are already everywhere. Your thoughts and everybody else's thoughts. That's why it's everybody is you pushed out. Because we're all one energy. We're all connected and it doesn't go anywhere. Do you hear the implication of this? We don't need to struggle by putting these pieces together anymore. They all fit perfectly. So, everyone as you pushed out, it can be no other way. Everybody as you pushed out, how could it be different? If it's holographic, if it's non-local, if it's one energy, right? And if that energy gets manifested in an infinite number of realities or frequencies, or in other words, film roles, Right? You see and perceive one manifestation of that one energy based on your inner state of being, what you think, feel, assume, believe about yourself and others in the world. So what, what Neville was getting at, and what I'll, remember, everyone as you push out, that idea wasn't invented by Neville. Neville gave it that term, that acronym. But that idea has been with the ancients since the beginning of time. So this is nothing new. The idea is that what you see and perceive in a person 
call that person one manifestation because everything is manifested by you. It comes up, everyone comes through you. It's then a manifestation of that one energy based on your inner state of being. What's your mix of vibration and frequency and thoughts, feelings, and beliefs? That's what you get. You get whatever you're thinking, feeling, and believing about that person or about 3D reality or about things of, around you. Do you hear this, guys? Infinite, and remember, and you're saying, well, well, wait a minute. What about their free will? And what about them? And what about if someone sees them, sees them differently? Remember, you're, there's infinite versions of each person, including yourself, and infinite realities. So when you change your inner mix, you're aligning and corresponding with one version of that person in one reality. And as that mix constantly changing, you're always identifying with a different version in a different reality. We're multidimensional beings. So you're, you're always, so you, the person looks the same, you still think of them, and it is them. But, the, but, the, but you're always traveling through multi-dimensions and multi-versions of yourself in every moment. The reason it feels like it doesn't feel like it really changes is because we usually think, feel, and assume the same things about ourselves and others all day long, every day. And in, in the moments when we don't, we're shifting realities. But then we shift back when something happens. Do you get this? This is big. You have, so what do you have? So it's nothing to do with manipulating free will. You're just seeing another infinite version of themselves. You're not changing the, ver the other one version of a person. You're seeing another version of them. So it's nothing to do with that. Where is your free will? To choose. To choose what you want, the reality that you want to occupy, right? You have freedom of choice. That means choosing and intending, not needing and wanting. That's free choice, right? When you desire something, it implies lack. When you are resisting something, it, you give it reality. That's how to ask God for what you really want. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like and share our videos. That's how we get our message out. You can follow us on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful. Uh, join our group on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors. Uh, you can hit us up on, on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, and you can always visit my website at TomKaren.com or BeSomethingWonderful.com. And there's other information below in the video in the in description description section if you want to re reach out to me. Guys, until next time, with great love and great light and infinite gratitude, this is Tom. See you soon.